What's up guys, Runner Runner Poker here, and today I'm covering a session of poker that I played from Thanksgiving Day last year, actually. We're playing 2-5 No Limit Texas Hold'em at the Daytona Beach Racing and Card Club. We're into the game for $800. Let's run it up. Starting off this session right, we're looking down at Ace-King Offsuit on the button. There's a cutoff limp, I make it 25 to go. The big blind calls, and the cutoff limper calls. So three ways in position with 75 in, we're getting the board of Ace-10-7. Top pair, top kicker. Checks to me, and I continue for 40. Big blind folds, and the cutoff calls. As if top pair, top kicker wasn't enough, now we're making top trips on the turn. Cutoff checks, and I check for deception. I might be too strong to bet. The river is a jack. Cutoff checks for a last time, and this isn't gonna stand. I put them all in since they don't have much left. Nevertheless, they give it up pretty quickly. Feels good to win the first one. And that's kind of one of the only ones we win for a while. Trying out a different premium this time, we've got queens in the small blind. There's two limps to me, and I make it 25 to go. The big blind calls, and both of the limpers call. So four ways out of position with 100 in, we get a board of king 3-4, two diamonds. Yikes, kind of a tough board. Nevertheless, I'm repping the range, and I continue for 60. The big blind calls, and the other two players fold. Not feeling super great, especially when the turn is the eight of diamonds. Now, against this older gentleman, I'm not feeling like I beat much of anything, since there's an overcard to my queens that they called with, and the flush just got there. I check, planning to kind of just shut down, but they check too. To make matters worse, the river is an ace. Now I really don't feel like I beat anything. I check, hoping to just show this one, but they're not gonna let that happen. They bet 75. Again, not beating much, so I just let it go. This next hand, it's a little weird. We're looking down at King Jack offsuit and a cutoff, but that's not really where the story begins. The small blind has posted both the blinds since they missed their big blind. So they've bought the button and there's a button straddle. It's folded all the way to me, and now I've only got two players to go through, the button and the small blind, who has effectively posted both blinds, and there's more money than usual. So I'm going for this deal for sure with this hand. I'll make it 40 to go. That deal does not even come close to working. Both the button straddle and the small blind make the call. Hi, Runner Runner Poker here, and let me ask you a question. Does someone you know or love suffer from the effects of falsified information? If that's the case, please dial 1-800-MY-EDITOR-IS-TRASH and fact check this information. Wait, that's me. So three ways, with 120 in, we get aboard of King Jack 8. This steal has turned into a robbery. Now we've got top two pair. Small blind checks, I'm betting again, this time for 50. I want to get some value. Button folds with the small blind calls. The turn comes an eight. Kind of an interesting card. The small blind checks. I'm pushing the value again, this time for 80. Setting up for a sizable river jam. Small blind calls again, which is interesting. The river is a queen. Not the greatest card, especially when the small blind donk rips it in for about 200. I feel like I'm put in the blender in this spot because there's a lot that I lose to. I lose to a floated eight, like ace eight. I lose to some of the weird wonky straights that called two streets trying to hit. I just feel like I have to see it. I'm at the top of my range for this spot with top two pair. Maybe not the top, but kind of close. I throw in the chips, planning on getting it in anyway if they checked, and they show us ace 10 for quite the minus EV line, if I do say so myself, floating with a gutter twice on a paired board especially. But maybe I didn't bet big enough to push it off. Either way, we're losing this pot. Anyone sense deja vu coming? You better. We've got queens again, this time in the hijack. Well, it's really under the gun plus one, but we're shorthanded, so it is what it is. There's a button straddle, and the small blind has called, the big blind has called, and under the gun has called. So there's a lot of money in there. I'm pumping it up here. I make it 60 to go. Folds around to the button who folds. The small blind calls. Then the big blind calls, then the under the gun player calls. So, kind of a nightmare situation here. At least we're in position, but we're four ways in a bloated three bet pot with about 250 in the middle, and it gets worse as the flop comes six, seven, eight, two diamonds. I want to vomit. Absolutely gross spot. At least we're in position, and it does check to me, and I like to take the free card. I'm not really gonna pump this that hard. The turn, though, changes everything. It's the ace of diamonds. Now I've got the second nut flush draw, and it's a card that's gonna look good for me. Nevertheless, the small blind comes out 
and bets 135. It folds to me, and in this spot, in position, I'm just going to call with the second nut flush draw. So I make the call. The river is a board pairing seven. Small blind checks, and here's what makes this hand really frustrating. I check, but I think in hindsight, I should be jamming here pretty much every time. The turn and the river aren't going to be super great for a lot of the holdings that our small blind has, aside from maybe exactly 7-8. And if they did have a flush on the turn, the, the river is just awful for them. Nevertheless, I checked, and they show their hand immediately and show deuce three of diamonds for a low, actually the nut low flush, and I'm just kind of vomiting. I mean, it just feels awful to lose this pot in this way, and ugh, I don't know. It felt weird at the time. What do you guys think I should do here? You still feel that deja vu? It's coming back. This time we've got ace-king offsuit in the small blind. There's a hijack raise to 15. The button has called, and I'm going to try to pump it up again. Let's keep it going. I make it 60 to go. The hijack is the only caller. So we're going heads up out of position with about 135 in the middle to another pretty gross board of 10.75. I see bet 40 just to see if I can take it down, but we get snap raised to like 125. I'm not continuing here with pretty much no redraw, so I let it go. The hijack is the same player from last hand, shows that they had us pretty much beat again with 6-8 of hearts. So we did have the best hand, but wow, they had a killer draw. This player has cost us quite a little bit of money so far. But you know what doesn't cost any money? Subscribing to the channel and hitting the like button on this video. Let's see if we can get out of this hole. Hey James, what are your opinions on King Queen? Bad. All right, well we've got King Queen in this hand then <laughs> on the button. There's an under the gun limp. The hijack has raised it up to $30. I make the call on the button and the under the gun player calls. So we're going three ways in position with King Queen and the flop comes King Six Deuce. Rainbow, not bad. Top pair decent kicker. It actually checks to me in this hand, and I'm pushing the value here with my top pair decent kicker. I bet 40. Under the gun folds, and hijack calls. The turn is a seven. They check, I bet 100, and they fold. At least we managed to get one street of value with a bad hand. Where'd he go? We've seen a lot of premiums, but you're not ready for this one. We've got nine seven of spades. There's a button straddle. The small blind and the big blind have called. I make the call and it folds all the way around to the button, who checks. And somehow, we're kind of in position with 40 in. Flop comes ace, eight, three, two spades. Not bad. Checks all the way to the button, who bets 50. Folds back to me, and I make the call with the flush draw. The turn is a pretty rough card for having a flush draw. It's a board pairing eight. I check, kind of just planning to give it up, but the button lets us see a free card. The river is a six of spades, giving us our flush. We bet 70 for value, but they let it go pretty quick. At least we made a decent hand and got a little value. All right, time for another slightly frustrating hand. We're putting on the button straddle for 10, and we look down at ace 10 offsuit. The small blind folds, and then the entire table calls. We're on the button, not feel comfortable squeezing this hand over six people, so I decided to just check. So we are seven ways fully in position with an ace, and we get a board of ace jack six. The entire table checks to me, and top pair marginal kicker, I'm just going to see a free turn, maybe try to take this one to showdown. The turn, though, has other plans. It's another ace. Big blind picks up the aggression now for 25. There's two calls, and you may be thinking, is it time to raise? Well, after the first player in this series decided to bet into six other people, and there's two calls, I really have no idea if my ace is even good. That being said, I'm just going to make the call here and close the action. The river is an eight. I'd say it's a brick. The big blind checks, and then the next player go actually bets 65. Folds to me, and again, same mentality. I don't really feel super comfortable raising, so I just call. Big blind actually folds, and we are shown some very unfortunate news. We didn't lose the pot. We won, but they show ace five for a dry, weaker ace. And I feel like that pot could have been a lot bigger. But I'm trying to play the best I can. And in that multi-way of a pot, I think there's certainly a chance when those early position players bet that I could just be super dead. I don't know. Again, let me know what you guys think. For our last hand of the day, I'm super excited to tell you about this one because it has a hilarious ending. 
I've got ace four suited in early position. There's a button straddle, the small blind calls, big blind folds, then I call, and then the entire rest of the table calls. I'm not gonna try to say all of the positions. I'm just gonna let the action run roll. So uh, yeah, it gets back to the button, and they gotta do it. They raise it up to 35. Ugh. The small blind lets it go, and everyone at this table is pretty stubborn, as we all call this 35, except for the small blind. Again, just gonna let the action run through the table, because that's a lot of positions to remember and say, oh, so we are going in a massively bloated pot. I think there's like 220 in the middle, and wow, we get a very interesting board of seven, seven, seven. Under the gun checks, I check, and then the entire table checks. So we're getting a free turn card, and what a card it is. It is an ace. We now effectively have a pretty decent boat. I check. The next player to go bets 100. I think the hijack calls 100, and it folds back to me, and I make the call as well with a full house. The river is fairly inconsequential, so I believe it's a 9. I check. There's another bet of 100. The last player in the hand that's not me calls, and I make the call. And would you believe that we all turn over exactly ace four. I mean, it, it doesn't get more hilarious than that. We're chopping this pot three ways, and what a hilarious end of the session. Alrighty, so running the numbers, although we didn't manage to get back to fully even, not even close really, we finished down 650 in the time that we played, which, you know, the only reason I didn't stay longer is the table was feeling kind of dry. I mean, the last couple of hands are an exception. Definitely picked up a little bit by then, but it's tough to win those big multi-way pots, and I had kind of reached my limit. Also, it was Thanksgiving, so <laughs> that's right. I played this session on Thanksgiving. We're actually covering a lot of the sessions that I played earlier now. Some of the, I played a lot over my Thanksgiving break, so yep. Finished down 650. Didn't feel like there was a lot I could do. I was definitely seeing some good hands, but couldn't convert any of them. I don't really have much else to say on that. Before this video concludes, I just want to let you know and remind you that I am giving away one Runner Runner Poker Card Protector per video. I didn't actually bring it with me, but I'll explain how the giveaway works. If you've made it this far into the video, firstly, thank you for watching. We are doing our per video giveaway of one Runner Runner Poker Card Protector. Very excited to be giving these away. I've got so many more made now. It's very exciting. To be eligible for the giveaway, first like this video and then leave a comment down below. And when this video hits 200 likes, the comment with the most likes will win a free complimentary shipping included Runner Runner Poker Card Protector. I think the like goal on the previous two giveaways was a bit too high and I don't know if it's going to get there. So what I'm going to do for those videos is at the end of a month from when I posted that video, I will be selecting the comment with the most likes. So once again, like this video, comment down below, and may the best comment win. I've actually visited this location before as well. This is Depot Park in Gainesville. I'm actually about to play some spike ball with a couple of friends, and I'll have some footage from that. Easy. Whoa. Easy. Whoa. Uh, that's so funny. Yes! Whoa! Let's go! <laughs> With all of that said, my friends, remember, keep your body healthy, keep your mind healthy. This is Runner Runner Poker. Have a good one.